Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a lesson on how wisdom will try you. All right. Wisdom will eventually try you. All right. Because it's one thing, okay, to um go out, preach, prophesy, do these videos, you know, uh, exhort, you know, rebuke, you know, teach, edify, prophesy, all of these various different, you know, gifts, you know, the men of the Lord have been given, you know, you know, it's a beautiful thing to go and teach these things and warn and rebuke and exhort. All right. But there's going to come a point where wisdom will try you. You see? And a lot of men fail those trials, all right, um, and eventually, you know, uh, are sifted out. Now, this is the book of Sirach, the fourth chapter, and the 17th verse, speaking of wisdom, it says, For at first she, all right, because wisdom, you know, is likened to many things, all right, um, you know, a wife, a mother, a sister, so it can be known as she, but it's also known as a brother. Okay, water, you know, milk, wine, honey. Okay, various uh, uh, different, you know, uh, relationships and, you know, things within nature, relationships between men and women, okay, can be tied, okay, into how, you know, wisdom comforts us, you know, nourishes us as a mother, you know, protects us as a sister, you know, who's in her right mind, of course. Because a sister who's in her right mind, who loves you, okay, she has the ability to see, you know, even particular women you bring in your life and be like, nah, she not right. All right, so wisdom can be likened to many things. So you you, you notice in a lot of scriptures, wisdom is likened to a woman. Wisdom is even likened to a wife that you're supposed to be into, okay? So wisdom is likened to many things, all right? This does not give the notion of a feminine presence in the heaven, you know, that whole Shekinah vibration, okay? Now, Sirach, the uh, fourth chapter and the 17th verse, speaking of wisdom, because, let's see here. Let's start at 15. It says, Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations. All right, and Yahweh Shai told us, He that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end, to him will I give power over the nations. All right. And the same rod of iron I've been blessed with by my father to judge them. I'm going to give to them. All right. So the same rod of iron, Yahweh Shai is going to have that authority he has over the nations. He's going to give that authority. All right. Unto his men. OK. The 144,000. OK. The, the, the priest after the order of Melchizedek. OK. The, the, the which will be the judges of the whole entire planet earth. And we know the large multitude falls under that order. So whoso giveth ear to her wisdom shall judge the nations. And we were given this grace period to learn judgment. Okay. To build ourselves up and uh, offer up an acceptable sacrifice to Yahweh Bashem Shai, And hopefully, all right, it will be accepted. Okay. It says, uh, because we're justified by faith under this grace period. All right. By faith, are ye saved through grace? OK, to be entered into that new covenant. It says, and he that attended unto her shall dwell securely. See, he that attended unto her shall dwell securely. This is why you always got to be checking yourself. All right. And this is why you always got to examine yourself. OK, and make sure that wisdom is at the forefront of your actions and not the flesh. OK. Because there's a lot of seducing spirits out here. It says, if a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her, and his gen and his generation shall hold her in possession. For at first, this is the point, she will walk with him by crooked ways. So wisdom has the ability to try you. Because you can find yourself in a groove teaching, you know, telling everybody what they need to do. Okay? And that's a good thing, you know, the you know, warning, prophesying. But then there's going to come a point where wisdom is going to try you out, meaning put you in a position to where you have to apply 
the various things that you're telling everybody else that they need to do. All right. And when that happens, a lot of men. All right. They 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 uh, they become movable. As the scriptures say, we are to be immovable. You see, and trials and tribulations are needed. All right. As one of the brothers did a video uh, earlier, I was watching it. OK, uh, stones need what friction to be polished. All right. And as the book of uh, Second Peter's, the second chapter. All right. Or for, I believe it's first Peter's, the second chapter it calls us what lively stones. OK, and we know when it's all said and done, we're going to be like a, a, a like a beautiful, you know, the, the scriptures describe, you know, the, the spiritual temple as with beautiful stones. All right. And the only way to get to that point is to go through these trials and tribulations and keep your integrity okay even when you don't understand what's going on all right you you keep the main thing the main thing so wisdom has the ability to put you in a position to apply you know maybe uh, what you're praying for you here it is you're praying you know but lord give me patience all right lord give me the the the, the you know the uh, spirit to endure lord keep the spirit keep the spirit on me all right. You know, let me not get in my feelings when I'm rebuked. So the Lord will use the very wisdom that he's uh, given you to go and teach, which is a gift. And he'll put you in situations where you'll be tried by that very wisdom that you have. OK. And a lot of men, once they're put in position to apply what they're telling everyone else to do and what you and apply, how was shy? And what he did, that's when you fail. A lot of men fail at that point. And you don't want to be that guy. Okay? Because there's a way Yahweh Shai handled things. All right? And as followers of Yahweh Shai, we have to put our flesh aside, you know, our emotions, and what? Walk in his way, which is not easy. Because we've been, what? Raised to do contrary to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You see? We look at that as weak. The way Yahweh Shai moved, you know, in this world is looked at as docile. All right. This world is more, you know, reactive, you know, reactionary, getting your revenge. All right. Well, in this thing of ours, we're, we're not called to get our own vengeance. We have to wait on the vengeance of the Lord. And that requires faith. So you're going to be put in situations where you're going to be tried by wisdom. Let's read it again. Ecclesiastes 4 and 17. For at first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. And the laws is what? The discipline. OK, so you're going to be put in a lot of situations in this truth, even amongst the brotherhood. You're going to have particular brothers that are challenging to how you may operate. Right. But they're still men of the Lord, because just because a brother doesn't operate in the manner you operate does not make him wicked. It's a challenge. And when you come into this thing, you, 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 you're, you're entering into uh, Yahweh Shai's building, the tabernacle of David, Lord willing, we're of that number. All right. You're entering into a foundation that was, you know, built. All right. Starting in the heavens. OK. And we're, we're entering into that. In these times, you know, when Yahweh Shai came into the earth and gathered, you know, the uh, the 12, that was the beginning of the building of the tabernacle of David. OK, and then eventually, you know, down the line, you know, uh, the Gentiles came in, the Israelite foreigners. OK, Yahweh Shai gathered from amongst the circumcision. All right. And then eventually the Israelite foreigners. All right. And he told his disciples, you're going to teach all right. And prophesy in the uttermost parts of the world, which is over here in the Americas. All right. Which would lead to our people scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. Waking up. And that's happening. OK. So as we're doing this work, as we're laboring, you're entering into this truth. All right. You, you encounter brothers from all different walks of life with different spirits than you. OK. And that can be challenging. OK. The Lord, the spirit that's on you. The Lord may want, you know, uh, your spirit to help, you know, polish another brother's spirit. So where he's weak at. All right. Uh, uh, you become his strength. And it may become annoying in your spirit and vice versa. 
all right, where you may be weak at, that brother may uh, harden you and, and, and polish you, all right? But when iron sharp, when friction and iron sharp and iron, it's not always easy. It can weigh on you, okay? And when, when things like that happen, you have brothers with the mindset, I didn't sign up for this. And that's just one aspect of the challenges that come along with this truth, all right? Because the brotherhood is a beautiful thing, but it can also be a mirror for you to see where you're weak at. All right. And if you're proud, what you do is you run from that correction and you start to blame everybody else. All right. Because you were called out for some shortcomings or things that the Heavenly Father, through his only begotten son, sent men in your life to help you to work on. Because we all need to what? Be purified. We all have in, in, impurities in us that have to be purged out. OK, that's why it's, it's likened unto gold tried in a fire. And there's a process. All right. Um, to where when goldsmiths are purifying gold. All right. The uh, question comes, well, how do you know when to take it out of the fire? All right. And the answer is when he sees his image in the gold, when he's able to see his image in the gold, then boom, he takes it. He takes it out of the fire. And likewise, with Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, we're being what? purified by the fire because you have to understand what did John say concerning this high priest Hamashiach Yahweh Shah he's gonna purify you by uh, uh, water all right and fire so we've received the word all right to wash away and you know purge away you know the old man okay to the living waters right this doctrine but then you have the fire aspect of it okay which <laughs> You have to walk through the uh, fire, all right, and you use the water, all right, to put out particular fires. But in a lot of senses, you have to go through the fire, okay, so that you may be be found worthy in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Shai. And if you don't, if you aren't being challenged, all right, then ultimately you, uh, hey, you, you you're not in the truth. This truth is a challenge. It's, a, it's, it's not easy. Again, wisdom will do what? Walk with you by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon you. This truth <laughs> and things that you have to endure in it, being slandered, okay? False narratives, you know, that, that all happened to Yahweh Shai. That all happened to the men of the Lord. King David, all of the men of the Lord had to go through these things that we go out and warn about. But when it comes upon you, okay, that's... When it's time to apply that very knowledge, wisdom, and understanding you've been exuding, you've been preaching. And it can go on so many levels. Every every individual has their own particular walk, okay? Every individual has their own measure, okay? Some may seem, you know, more extreme than others, but really nobody's hell is worse than the other because we all have our own spirit, our own walk, our own you know, uh, uh, pet peeves or things that bother us. So coming into this truth, you're going to be tried by wisdom. You see, and that is a the, the the that period where you're tried. All right, is is your chance to what you know the purge out infirmities, so that what she may trust you. See, let's read this again. At first, she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him. And torment her him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her law. So you're going to be tried. You're going to be put in positions where, all right, you're going to have to put the flesh away. Because here it is, you're telling everybody in the whole nation, you got to do this. You need to do that. Yo, she shouldn't do this. Okay, but there's going to come a point where everything that you're saying, you're going to have to act it out. You're going to have to use this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You're praying for patience. The Lord is going to put you in a situation where you got to apply patience. The, the, the scriptures talk about uh, uh, long suffering. Let's get that real quick. Okay. Long suffering. Let's see here. That's one of the fruits of the spirit. All right. So let's see here. We have 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, 
reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right. Second Timothy three and 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience. See, long suffering. OK. Because it can be a man that's beloved of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. OK, but he may have a very uh, spirit that kind of hurts you. It bothers you. Okay, and you know he's sincere, right? But you have to be long-suffering, just as the Lord is long-suffering with us. That word for long-suffering is macrothymia, patience, endurance, constancy, steadfastness. See, you got to be steadfast in this thing. All right, and the challenges is when you really show forth, all right, that, that you're really uh, down with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's easy to just go out and teach. All right. But once you have to go through things in this truth, that's your that's your uh, time to apply everything you've been teaching and be an example of what you've been teaching. See, the scriptures say, be ye doers of the word. OK, it's good to hear it. OK, it's good to preach it, but to do it, <laughs> that just makes it it, it fulfills. It just makes it a, a, a sweet smelling savor and sacrifice that the heavenly father is pleased with, man, through Yahweh Shai. All right, because that's how we get to the Father through Yahweh Shai. Nobody is just going straight to the Father. Okay? And on earth, there are men set up to lead you to Yahweh Shai. All right? Patience. All right? That's one thing a lot that 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 that, that really bugs men out is when they have to be patient. When the answer doesn't come right then and there, when you have to suffer through something. Right? Forbearness. All right. Forbearance. Let's look up this word forbearance. All right. Define forbearance, patient, self-control, restraint, tolerance. OK. Because you don't know who's who. So you always got to be in the mindset of do you doing what's right. OK, you can't control every man's way in, 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 in you know, particular makeup. Now, when things get out of line, of course, you reel brothers back in, all right? You rebuke, you do the things necessary, all right? But you can't lose your cool, all right? Look, slowness, slowness in avenging, even with people who are coming up against you, being completely demonic, the, the flesh wants to reply. The flesh wants, I got to justify myself. But then you got to understand faith is knowing and trusting that Yahweh Bashim Shah is going to make it right anyway because you know the truth. You know uh, uh, whatever is being said is a goddamn lie. So then what do you have to do? You, you, you have to be slow in avenging. You have to be long-suffering. You have to be patient because the Lord is always working, right? So let's go back to the scripture real quick. So long-suffering is one of the fruits of the spirit, man. OK, and we can't allow these Christians to take these terms and just, you know, the, the you know, the fruits of the spirit. That, that, that sounds so weak and Christian like um, amongst a lot of Israelites. Now, nah, you have to apply those things, man. OK, don't let these Christian hijack John 316. Now, nah, that's for the elect, man. All right. Verse 18 in Sirach, the fourth chapter. Then she will return straightway unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. All right. So once you start to apply these things, the Lord will most definitely in his time, not in your time, in his time, open up secrets unto you. OK, this particular challenges brothers go through like the woman. A woman is a the, the rites of passage for a lot of brothers. A, a lot of brothers. All right. Um had to get over a particular woman or relationship or whatever before the Lord really opened up to them. But if you never fully get over the, 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 the aspect of a woman in this world and the challenges that come with it, the Lord may not open himself fully up to you, man. Now you could get, mer you're not saying you can't get mercy. All right. But that whole aspect of the woman and, and the stronghold that comes with the woman in Babylon, the great and under the serpent's authority you got to get over that shit, man. Certain brothers try to put on this facade as if they're macho and this and that. But really, behind at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're hurt. 
And that woman or whatever situation you went through really has control over you to where you try to hide it under, you know, this this bravado. You got to get over that shit, man. That that's a challenge you had to go through. We all had to go through it. A lot of brothers have to go through it. Some don't, but a lot of brothers right to passage is a woman. That would be a beautiful lesson when a woman is your rites of passage, man. Because that can destroy a man. Because the, the woman is a glory of a man. So, anyway, once the Lord, through wisdom, can see that he can trust you, then she will return straightway and unto you and comfort you and show you her secrets. Meaning he will sup with you. That's why the scriptures say, behold, I knock all right. If any man open, I will come and sup with him. All right. The sup with him mean you like your Howard Shaw's going to come. I got the sandwiches. Nah, man, the, the, the sup with you, meaning he's going to uh, 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 in the ancient world to eat with somebody was the time that y'all opened up your thoughts to each other. That's what dinner is really supposed to be all about. We live in a time where, where when you when the waiter is taking too long with your food, you're like, where the fuck my food at? But really. It's supposed to be that way. <laughs> Your food ain't supposed to just be come out in two seconds and two minutes. Nah. You said when you're supping with somebody, you're open, you're getting intimate with them. Intimate doesn't mean sex, by the way. Intimate means you become vulnerable. You open yourself up to someone. So when you look at uh Revelation 3 and 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. Now when you look up this word sup. And Apostle Tahar brought this scripture out in one of his recent videos. Okay, this word sup is uh, the pineal. Okay, to sup. Okay, to root word, supper, especially a formal meal upheld at evening, used of the Messiah's feast, symbolizing salvation in the kingdom. And salvation starts with the receiving of the Holy Spirit. All right, we already have the kingdom, okay, in the form of the Holy Spirit, Rachakwadash, okay, and those who are of that number, all right, will use that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding given from on high in this grace period to do what's necessary to be transferred into the full marriage, all right, as the scriptures say. All right, the 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 the, uh, the 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 marriage of the Lamb has come. Revelation, the nineteenth chapter, in the seventh verse. So this is the book of Sirach four and nineteen. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him. And how do you go wrong? You get offended, you overreact, you say I didn't sign up for this. You you go back on your oath. Okay, you start to change the things you were taught. Become proud. Okay, and you become a complete demon. Okay, you take heed to lies and ultimately spirits jump on you. See, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. And that's happening to a lot of men. Okay, and we're not there yet, so it can happen to us. So you want to always be all right in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very, very thoughtful. All right. And keep these things in your mind. Everything is a challenge and it's more challenges coming down the pipe. <laughs> all right and it's gonna be hard okay but the scriptures say endure hardness as a good soldier of yahweh bashmi al shai observe the opportunity and beware of evil Obturn, observe the opportunity to repent all right and be upgraded because challenges ain't for your ruin therefore you're upgrading so observe when the lord is is putting you through a challenge so that you can show yourself worthy and you do what's right and remain upright in the Holy Spirit, man. All right. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. Don't be ashamed that you're being called out. Don't be ashamed that you're going through a challenge. Don't be ashamed that, that the Heavenly Father is taking you through something Yahweh Shai went through. No matter what it is, don't be ashamed. When you do, when you, when you go off and you're called out, don't be ashamed of it. Utilize it as a, as a moment to, to what upgrade when you're put in a, when in a situation that's uncomfortable to you. 
Okay, this is called the straight gate for a reason. It's very uncomfortable. It's tight, but it's right. All right. So don't be ashamed when it concerns your soul. When you look bad or, or whatever situation it may be. For there is a shame that bringeth sin. And there is a shame which is glory and grace. And that's what? Godly sorrow. I got a roll, but I'm going to just hit that real quick. Godly sorrow. Not worldly sorrow. Not I'm going to get my lick back sorrow. Not I'm not wrong sorrow. I can't be wrong type of sorrow. That bring it what? Sin. All right. But the scriptures talks about what? The meek shall inherit the earth. Second Corinthians 7 and 10 for godly sorrow worketh repentance. All right. To salvation. But not, uh, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world work at death and the sorrow of the world is the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. OK, and all of the various different things we were warned. All right. Not to give a uh, uh, give in to. All right. And the NLT for the kind of sorrow God wants to us to experience leads us away from sin. All right. And results in salvation. There is no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow which lacks repentance results in spiritual death. And see, when men are challenged and when they have to go through something, okay, they lack repentance. The last thing on their mind is repenting and finding fault with themselves. Even when you don't really understand, you got to ask the Lord, show me my fault. Okay. Salakia. Okay. If you know you didn't do anything wrong, that's when you give it into his hands and you remain upright and keep doing what's right. See? And these are the challenges that come with wisdom. Okay? Which is not of this world. Nobody in this world thinks like that. And see, a lot of people bring the old mentality of the world into this truth and that's when they become unfruitful. All right? And again, these ain't the easiest things to do, but that's why it's called the straight gate. Amongst everything else that comes with this truth. <laughs> All right. So. There's a shame which bring it sin and there's a shame which is glory and grace. All right. And we're under grace. All right. So let's end it off with a scripture I was reading earlier. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter and a 58 verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work and again the work is beyond the videos okay <laughs> there's a work amongst the body all right this is why you younger brothers and you up and coming officers got to be on point all right to make things easier on the men uh, uh, uh your elders and apostles man and bishops right us being on point makes their job easier. All right. And you brothers coming in. OK. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So the Lord is not slack. To, he's not going to forget. All right. When you when you when you're doing this work, you're going through these challenges and you keep your integrity. The Lord is watching. So you don't get a reward for that in this world like. This world doesn't reward you for humility and, and stick it to the, you know, but hey, the angels are always watching, man. So I just wanted to go through that. Hopefully y'all edify, man. On to the next. Shalom.